Time now for Live on Live and our special guest. And today's subject is the Middle East Peace Summit, which is being hosted here in Paris this Sunday. Dozens of countries will be attending, but both Israel and the Palestinians will be absent. Leaders Benjamin Netanyahu and Mahmoud Abbas have been asked to meet separately at the conclusion of the event, but Israel turned that invitation down. So what does France's push for peace actually stand to achieve? With us to discuss this is Manuel lafont rapnui director of the Paris office of the European Council on Foreign Relations. Thank you very much for being with us on the programme. Thank you. So France says that uh, it wants to start the negotiation process uh, at a moment where it's been largely abandoned. Can you tell us uh, what's the the main aim here? What's France hoping uh, will come out of this conference on Sunday? Yes, it was certainly cast uh, initially when it all began uh, months ago as this kind of, uh, with that level of ambition. I think now the ambition is a bit more um, focused on basically keeping the two-state solution of the agenda and keeping the issue of the Middle East peace process uh, as, as an important issue and a central issue in, in world policy, in foreign, foreign policy, and not just uh, something that people have, are tired of or don't really care uh, um, about. Okay, so the big push here, a drive uh, to, to bring both sides uh, back to the negotiations, but also to... Uh, uh, get renewed commitments from them for a, a stu- two-state solution. That, that's the hard part for the French because it was pretty clear even at the initial stages of that French initiative that uh, it was unlikely that the two parties would actually agree to get back to the negotiating table, to the direct negotiation that everybody believes is uh, needed. Uh, and that's even less likely uh, in the current context that it was uh, you know, one year ago, you could have some hopes that some things would happen. The US administration could do stuff. There could be another outcome for the US election. Facts on the ground could change, etc. That has not evolved in a way where the, this direct negotiation is more likely. And so the French have moved to something which is precisely because this is not going to happen anytime soon, or it's not likely that it's going to happen anytime soon, precisely you have to keep some pressure to remind both parties that it needs to happen at some point, and to remind maybe other international partners, whether the current ones or the one that will be inaugurated in January uh, 20th. And I do want to get to uh, the question there of Donald Trump, but but firstly, um, our listeners might remember that last June uh, in 2016, there was also a, a Paris uh, conference. How How is this one different? Uh, Well, it's not different uh, in the way that the two parties won't be there. Initially, the idea was that the first conference would be without the parties and the second one would be with the parties. It is so that the parties won't attend this one either. Uh, It is different because the context has changed, uh, as I've alluded to, uh, and also the the French hope that the the, uh, attendance to the first conference would do some kind of groundwork to make that international push for uh, in support of the two-state solution and in support of the likelihood of the two-state solution. Because right now what is at stake is whether it is plausible, possible, that there would, will be a, a two-state solution. And so there was uh, working groups working on economic assistance, working on infrastructures, working on uh, debate within both societies and between those uh, civil societies, um, on on institutional capabilities on the Palestinian uh, Authority side to make that two-state solution um, more easily to operationalize. And so those working groups are supposed to brief back to the wall uh, members of the conference in terms of what is it that can be done to support uh, the oper- operationalization of the two-state solution. That's, right. that's not really right. what people will look at. People will look at who is committed to the two-state solution and what will happen after the conference. Absolutely. I mean, so you've got uh, the participants at this meeting who have been very, working very hard on, on the details on the ground. But uh, Netanyahu has said that only direct bilateral talks can actually produce a solution to this conflict. So doesn't he have a point? 
Yes, of course he has a point. And actually, I think Mahmoud Abbas also believes that only a negotiated solution is acceptable to the Palestinians. So both sides want to have this kind of negotiation and don't want to have a solution imposed by uh, the others. The question is whether there is a path toward that solution or not. And right now, uh, if there's a path, nobody is working <laughs> on it. So the question is, how do you push the parties to enter into that path, uh, enter into those negotiations and to avoid uh, all the tits and tats that uh, the other, the, each other is accusing the other of uh, uh, doing that uh, serve as a, a reason or a pretext, depending on your perspective, not to enter into the negotiation. And uh, it's also about precisely if you think that the uh, agreed solution has to be in the framework of this two-state solution paradigm, then the question is, what is happening on the ground that could prevent that two-state solution to actually be implemented? Sure. And that's the big issue of settlements that was uh, discussed and voted about at the UN Security Council uh, last month in December. That's right. So this meeting comes just after that uh, UN Security Council resolution. I will remember that the US abstained uh, from that vote. They vetoed uh, similar votes in the past. Now, uh, Well, no actually, no. <laughs> the, the thing is, most of the time, they've, a long time ago, they used to vote in favour of resolutions condemning settlements. And most of the time, they've abstained. The fact is that the latest vote on the issue was in 2011 and under Obama, and then Obama vetoed. But there is constant US policy that settlements are uh, an issue for the solution to the Middle East uh, conflict. And there's a constant policy by the US that opposes settlement, illegal settlements, including at the UN. Now, Netanyahu is worried that this Paris conference uh, could lead to further action at the UN, perhaps before uh, Donald Trump takes office on January 20. Uh, is this uh, likely or is it even possible? No, it's, it's unlikely. Um, it, it would be possible in theory. It's unlikely. The thing is, the Palestinians uh, right now believe that the only, uh, the only battlefield on which they may have an advantage is uh, international institutions. They've pushed for votes for UN membership. They've pushed for votes to uh, have a case open at the International Criminal Court. Uh, that's, that's the place where they believe they have some kind of advantages. So they usually push for that. And they were very pleased, obviously, with the uh, resolution that was adopted against uh, settlements. But it's unlikely that people will try to follow up on that latest resolution by any action against Israel. Uh, first, because on, everybody has seen the reaction of Israel and the, the U.S. Uh, reaction. The inauguration in the U.S. is uh, pretty soon now. And nobody wants to do anything that looks like a provocation. I don't think that anyone at this Paris conference will try to do anything that can be uh, uh, in... in in honest uh, faith, uh, considered as a provocation to Israel or, or to the Trump administration. So I don't see anything happening before uh, the inauguration of the new US president. And uh, our listeners will uh, remember uh, Trump's uh, tweets from uh, Donald Trump uh, concerning the UN Security Council vote, uh, concerning the US position on Israel. He said things such as, stay strong, Israel. January 20th is fast approaching. Uh, that's just eight days from now. Uh, tell us, how does the Trump presidency stand to change things uh, concerning the Middle East and the peace process? Well, what is sure is that... Uh it doesn't look like uh, a president under whose watch uh, uh, such a, a vote at the UN Security Council could happen. If, if he had been the president, there would have been a US veto. That was everything that he wanted to make clear um, uh, during that period, because he's not the president yet, and the, the Obama administration made the call. But uh, it's probably not just going to be this kind of uh, change in policy. There is, and that's more coming more from the, the U.S. Congress right now, because precisely Trump isn't uh, in power uh, so far. Uh, you have, for instance, ideas about defunding the United Nations. 
so this is really uh, going to be a, a potentially tough moment for the UN as a consequence. Maybe there will be also few consequences for the countries who, which voted in favor of the, of the resolution.